it's the jib show it's good to have you here again it's another week i hope you're having a wonderful week so today we are going to take questions i'm going to answer some of the questions you sent to me and we can have a conversation in the comment section okay the first question i have here says hi joy i'm 38 and i live with my partner hmm. we have been living together for three years over the years the relationship has become toxic i feel my self-esteem eroding i don't have the strength to end it i'm too afraid to be alone but i know i will suffer depression if i remain how will you advise me to move on from this situation Ooh, okay this is it sounds very common i mean a lot of women will share um we've had many women share things like this toxic situations that they don't even know um initially are toxic and they stay in the relationship because they're afraid to be alone girl stop negotiating with your abuser in quotes um i don't know how you you choose to be in a toxic relationship and you stay there afraid that being alone will be worse there is nothing worse than being in a toxic situation if you feel a relationship is toxic it's time for you to move i you don't have to compromise your life based on what you think you have with someone you can have something better and loneliness is i don't know how we why why women are so afraid to be alone why are we afraid of loneliness what does that even mean like you're alone when you're alone you have peace i mean like, there's nothing bigger than peace in this world I, no, let's think about that okay so you're with someone and it's exciting and the sex is great probably not but whatever so you're having all of this thing back and forth and you realize it's actually a toxic situation and then you continue to negotiate if to stay if you want if you have to stay with him on it's toxic right and you continue to compare what you have with him with what you would have alone and for some reason women seem to choose to be with the abuser or in the toxic situation instead of being alone i don't understand that when you're alone you have peace you don't have to negotiate your peace you have I mean, you will have control over your life. You can decide who you want to be and what you want to be. I know I make it sound too easy, but step by step, you have to start appreciating who you are. Appreciate yourself. Appreciate what you bring to the table when it comes to who you are as a person and what people can can learn from you and the kind of relationship you can have, the healthy kind of relationship you can have. Begin to appreciate yourself. When you value yourself, I'm trying not to aspire to perspire here, but let me just drop that. When you value yourself, you will not be afraid to be alone and appreciate your aloneness. Just because you're alone doesn't mean you're lonely. People with partners can be lonely. And I don't, loneliness is you not knowing what to do with yourself. But when you know who you are and what you stand for and what you can do for yourself, it's just you being alone and having a peaceful life and making things happen for yourself. I really think at this point, you need to sit down and ask yourself what you want and what you re and how you really want to, what you see in your future, how you want your future to be shaped and start to move towards it. Don't get too comfortable in toxic situations. Don't, don't compare your, to uh, your toxic situation with the next woman's toxic situation because women do that where um, okay, so her, her leg is broken and she's like, oh, I'm not that bad because the other woman in the other street had two legs are broken and one arm is broken. Oh, my situation is not that bad. He just slapped me. But the other one, they literally beat her up. And, Yo, you are still in a situation. Now, she didn't say that she's in um, a violent situation. Toxic might even be emotional abuse or manipulation or whatever it is. But don't um, try to justify what you have. And don't compare it with other women. You need to free yourself from anything that devalues you and try to find your peace on your own. Because when you get to that place where you appreciate your aloneness, then maybe good things can start to happen to you. I, I know it sounds really um, 
aspire to perspire but sometimes you need you need you need that kind of advice you really need to jerk yourself up and move okay let me know what you all think um, in the comment section you can drop your comments and give her some advice i have another one here it says i have spent my entire life looking out and taking care of others i'll be 45 next year and i look like a bag of waste i don't know how and where to start to own my life since i have never been that person to put myself first can you teach me how to put myself first okay um how to put yourself first how to put yourself first <laughs> i think you should just prioritize yourself prioritize what is important to you prioritize what you want for yourself and i do understand the situation you're in where you feel responsible for everyone else and then in and then you expect that they show some kind of regard and be responsible for you too but life doesn't work that way it's you don't it doesn't work that way there's so many um, um scenarios and so many stories we've heard especially in families where someone will be abroad maybe a sibling sending money all the way to nigeria for somebody to build a house and then when they show up um one ten years later there is no house to be built as a matter of fact the story was going around i think last year something like that happened and when the man actually came to to see the house they claimed they had built there was no house and they killed him you see so the life is unfair so what do you do in such situations like that just look out for yourself look out for your best interests i always tell it's be selfish just be selfish be selfish in a way that doesn't harm another person whatever you're trying to do with anyone look out and protect especially protect your best interests protect your best interests any kind of partnership relationship friendship always look out for your best interest it doesn't mean you don't care about the other person it's just to ensure that you don't turn out bitter angry and un just just frustrated but when you look out for yourself you can compare the value the one the other person is bringing and the value you're bringing into the relationship and so that you don't have to live with all of that bitterness so i think at this point in your life now that you want to evaluate your life i think you need to sit back and you know prioritize the things that are important to you and always search for your best best interest in any any kind of relationship you get involved in all right please drop your comments if you have any advice for her i would like to read it and i'm sure she's reading too and i have yet another one here it says how do you think we can get rid of the dear joro culture where women complain about the most ridiculous things just to appear humble and submissive um okay we all know what dear joro means it's the platform where women go to complain about this and that and how men do this to them and all of that and all of that and she wants to know how we can move past this past that culture um that always seems to drag women down or make us look ridiculous i have never read I've, i don't think i've ever read any dear Juro, um post before if i've seen it and reading it's different from seeing it's probably somebody bringing it to my timeline and i'm more active on facebook so it's probably somebody and even on instagram yeah kind of so if i see it on my timeline i just just look at it and i move on but i because i already know the stories we all know the story so i am not i don't read it but I, I i know exactly what you're trying to say situations where women always seem to be helpless it's it's such an entertaining it's it's entertainment people love it people like to hear women complain about this complain about that and women begin to enjoy it themselves and i asked a question some time ago i said you know women can build businesses they've built they've shown that they can break the glass ceiling and move into corporate world and do great things and all of that but when it now comes to how to handle their relationship all of a sudden they seem very dull or dumb and they don't know what to do but like literally you run a business you probably make millions and millions of profits right you run a home you 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 buy your stuff you travel you do all these great things you can hold a seminar regarding your your field of interest and you can do all of these great things but when it comes to dealing with a man in your life all of a sudden you don't know if it is if you if it is proper to kneel and feed him or to you don't know these things you don't know you don't have you don't you don't know anything about that and i think it's really strange i think we we are just being pretentious because i think we do have the answers because new knowledge is, is available and 
we just don't want to rattle that culture. We don't want to rattle the culture. We want it to remain the same. I don't understand how a woman can run a business, right? Can take care of siblings and, and, and family and parents. And all of a sudden, one guy just comes into her life and then she doesn't know if it is proper for her to cook by 11 p.m. Of course, you're not supposed to cook by 11 p.m. <laughs> All right, well, I think we have the answers. We just have to start to question some of the cultural norms in our society and we have to start to question how life is at his... I think we, all, we have the answers. Women, we know what to do, but we are afraid to confront this particular culture. Okay, I have more questions, but I can't take take any this week so i'll continue next week but please drop your comments um i've shared three questions already let me know what you think the ladies will be reading thanks for watching i'll see you next week bye